Hello and welcome to Movies for Dumb Guys. I'm your host, Joe Johnson. And as usual, I'm joined by Ryan Sharp. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Tim Williams. Two against the world, baby. Two against the world. And straight from comics, beer, and sci-fi, Richie Rollins. Eat my <laughs> <laughs> That's and a little hint to my number one. That was a good movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Um, so, in light <laughs> of the events that are happening in the world today, women across the world are taking charge and making a difference in this world and changing things up and running for office and sending men to prison and all sorts of stuff. So in honor of the women in the world, we are going to do a podcast entitled No Man's Land, where we are going to discuss our favorite female characters in movie history. Everyone on board? Are we good with that? Yeah. All right. I guess I'm the only one good that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just thought it was a given we're here. <laughs> oh, I was being more enthused. Wow. Well, oh. Be careful in the world of men, Diana. They do not deserve you. That's right. All right. So getting into it, going to start off with my top five. I do have a list of 10. I'm going to do my top five. Then we're going to go around the table. And then uh, if we have time, we'll get to our honorable mentions at the end of the podcast. Now, I was wondering, am I going to mix things up? Am I going to (laughs) bring something different? To the table. I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, I mean, it's a theme with you today. It, we already know what Joe's number one movie is coming from, and I'm pretty sure we all know who it is. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, there's no the number one. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> You're my only hope. Uh, yeah. This must be the greatest movie ever made because it's been in every podcast. <laughs> Can't go a day without mentioning Star Wars. Why you stuck up? Half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll shave. <laughs> what was that, Rich? What did you just say? I said, I'm sorry. I'll shave. Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? <laughs> <laughs> Put my shirt yeah. back on. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So, compiling my list, how, how can I not make Princess Leia the greatest? Greatest female character of all time. Uh, One of the stars of one of the greatest movies of all time, if not the greatest movie of all time. Um, Feisty, rebellious. She smarts off to Darth Vader and Grand Moff Tarkin. She undergoes Mm. torture at the hands of what turns out to be her own father. Uh, Kisses her brother. Falls in love with Han Solo. uh, saves uh, Saves the galaxy. Uh, takes charge of the rebellion. I mean, easily and one of the greatest. She sounds females. like a very, um, very upset teenager rebelling against her father. Don't forget, flies through space like Mary Poppins. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Who knew she had that that ability? Right. So yeah. um, she does have the force. She is kind of a given. Well, yeah. I mean, it runs runs in her family. Uh, Ryan, I know how you feel about Star Wars, but you have to agree with me. That Princess Leia is one of the greatest female characters in movie history. Do do you know how I feel? Do you? Because uh, she's on my list. Okay. She uh, is definitely, uh, she's an icon. Like, uh, I mean, and she did it in a time, I mean, most of my list is a little more current. But she, you know, came out in the 1977 uh, epic film. And, uh, you know, everybody knows her. Uh, there's, I'd be hard pressed to find somebody that doesn't know who Princess Leia is. Even if you've never seen the movies, you don't. You're not a fan. You know, you who know she is. Princess Leia. So yeah, she is on my list. Tim, got to be up there near the top, isn't she? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, it seems like whenever we discuss Star Wars, <laughs> you and I are like right together. She is my number one, also. Um, that character could have very easily just been 
made into a damsel in distress that oh, had right. to be saved by Luke and Han, especially for that time of movies. But she was definitely written against type and became one of the most iconic female characters of all time in five movies now. Yeah. Um, I just wonder and, if any uh, other actress could have pulled that role off. I mean, it's strong, actually six, six if you count the end of Rogue One. Oh, that's right. She made a little CGI appearance there yeah. at the end there. Rich, your thoughts on Princess Leia. How does she rank among the greatest female characters? Well, I think uh, I didn't put her on my list, but uh, she should be on there. <laughs> I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Uh, you know what? If she talks to me like that from the grave one more time. <laughs> but uh, seriously, though, uh, Princess Leia. I felt if there was only one movie, it would have been all right. But since she's been in so many, and we got to watch her just uh, grow, her character just grew and grew more stronger and stronger. She became more prominent in every movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was awesome to watch. And, yeah, she should be in, like, the top 11. Yeah. I mean, I expected her to show show her Force powers in um, The Last Jedi. I just wish it would have been in a different way. Right, exactly. Yeah, and it makes you wonder why she never was able to use them to her fullest ability. Um, you almost have to go back. There is a, a kind of an obscure book that came out after the original Star Wars came out called Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Do you remember this? Yes. And her character, uh, spoiler alert, uh, picks up a lightsaber and goes toe-to-toe with Darth Vader. And somewhere in the back of my mind, I kept hoping we were going to see that in the movies somewhere, and it never did happen. And I, I feel like she never was fully explored as, as much as she could have been as that character. But uh, still, despite um, despite all that. Definitely held back. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah, might have put her up yeah. the number one if they would have followed through. Yeah. All righty. So that's number one for on me, my uh, list. I mean, maybe that's what they had plans for in the final movie. Maybe. But uh, we'll never know now. Right. All right. Number two on my list. Uh, she's come up on this podcast before. Um. Hopefully you guys will agree with me. Did IQs just drop sharply while I was away? Ellen Ripley from the Alien movies, or at least several of the Alien movies, is number two on my list as uh, one of the greatest female characters of all time. One thing I had uh, forgotten about or didn't realize is that Sigourney Weaver was actually nominated for an Oscar um, for her performance in the sequel, Aliens. Um, I had totally forgotten really? about that. Um, in the first movie, she's part of an ensemble, and they're all picked off one by one until she's the last person standing, and then she ends up going toe-to-toe with the alien and outsmarts the alien and wins. And, and that was something we had not seen up until that point, the the female heroine. Well, I mean, you know, of course we had Princess Leia, but um, uh, sh- this was kind of a kind of a horror-slash-action flick, and here was Ripley kind of taking charge of... Uh, of the, the crew and, and calling the shots and making the demands. And it was so unique and so different at the time. And, and uh, I think it was a character that um, everybody, including, you know, especially females could rally behind, like here's this heroine, this heroine in this movie and uh, saving the day. And then in the sequel, she kicked it up a notch. I mean, she was a badass in the second one. And then of course, you know, it leads up to that clip that uh, I've mentioned before. from her you bitch one of the greatest movie moments of all time and uh yeah one of the greatest female characters in movie history ryan you okay over there oh we my just god spent 10 so minutes on joel's top two so tired of hearing about aliens <laughs> <laughs> we get it you like sigourney weaver uh-huh got it all right glad you agree <laughs> tim <laughs> I also have this as my number two, and I am not even a huge fan of the Alien movies. But uh, why do I get the not, not that I'm against them, but um, but they're just not my favorite movies. But like you said, especially with the ensemble cast in the beginning, who would have thunk at that time that she would be the one that ends up surviving? I mean, most people going into that movie probably wouldn't have thought that she would be the one. Yeah, you probably think Dallas survives. or somebody, the, right. the captain of the ship, and he yeah. gets picked off pretty quickly. Right. So, uh, yeah, definitely have to give her credit for um, blazing the trail. 
why do I get the feeling that you and Joe sat around with cookies and milk doing this no. list? I had, I had no idea. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> in- I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. You say uh, cookies and milk? Yeah. The cookies and That's milk. the only way to be sure. She's a badass. She's awesome. I agree. She's a badass. I've never watched a Alien movie all the way through, but the pieces I've seen, she's she's a badass. All right. Let's move on to number three. Thank Again, you. probably not never much alien movie all the way of a surprise no. here. Um, <laughs> There's that one I fell asleep with. I actually had <laughs> trouble finding an audio clip for this particular character. Well, that bodes not, well. Not heavy on dialogue, more heavy on action. But well, that's all right. We've got 50 minutes left now. Here's, a, <laughs> here's one clip that I found. 15? Why are you freaking out? Glad we got a counter going. How are you supposed to know? Men like you built a hydrogen bomb. Men like you thought it up. (laughs) You think you're so creative. You don't know what it's like to really create something, to create a life. Feel it growing inside you. All you know how to create is death Mom. and destruction. Mom! <laughs> we need to be a little more constructive here, okay? We still have to stop this from happening, don't we? So in the first Terminator, uh, Linda Hamilton was kind of meek. Uh, you know, all this was kind of happening around her, and uh, she had to kind of be saved by Reese. And then... Uh, and then Something happens to her in this movie. She's transformed. Of course, she gets impregnated by Reese with the future savior of the planet. Uh, then T2 rolls around. And again, like like Ripley and like Princess Leia, uh, she was an ass kicker. She, she uh, held her own in this movie and um, such a great character. Um, now, of course, I'm going to uh, limit... Um, the portrayal of this character, Linda Hamilton. I thought Linda Hamilton did a great job in those movies. And she's also going to be in the new Terminator movie that's currently in production, going to be coming out in 2019. But the character was also played by Amelia Clark from, um, we all know is Khaleesi from, uh, from uh, Game of Thrones. And coincidentally, Lena Headey, who also was in Game of Thrones, um, she played uh, Sarah Connor in Sarah Connor Chronicles. Uh, both of those uh, takes on Sarah Connor were alter- alternate timeline versions of Sarah Connor. So I'm pretty much going to stick to Linda Hamilton's version. Uh, Ryan, your thoughts on Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor? I'm surprised you had such a hard time finding a clip, but I'm glad the clip you found was like five minutes long. That was awesome. Um, so, no, she is not on my list, but uh, narrowly missing out. I do think she was a badass in the in the movie. Um, I do think she is a great character in the movie, and uh, I can see why you picked her. Tim? I agree with Ryan. She did not make my list, but um, she could have definitely been number 11. Uh, just not, I just, I'm just not a huge fan of the Terminator movies. But, yeah. but, but there's no doubt that she was a great ass-kicking character in one of the, uh, the original ones. Richie? <clears throat> well, this is another great example of like when you got more than one movie with that character you get to grow with them and and we get to see why she became such a badass you know how she was before and you get to see like the arc i agree all right moving on to number four (laughs) glad he um (laughs) this character appeared in how many how many of these harry potter movies were made eight or nine i I don't know 14 minutes into it (laughs) but talk about watching a character grow we watched her go from a precocious little 11 year old to like uh, an 18, 19 year old. Um, Some of us. I am talking about Hermione. That. Watch that. Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter movies. Wingardium Leviosa. Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. You do it then if you're so clever. Go on, go on. Guardium Leviosa. Guardium Leviosa. Guardium Leviosa. So in those early movies, she was kind of a little bit of a know-it-all. Um, but we got to watch her character grow as uh, Emma Watson grew and become one of, became one of the main characters of the movie and helped save the day multiple times. My favorite 
uh, movie in the entire series is uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, where they do the time travel element, uh, which he was instrumental in, in performing. And uh, I think became uh, not only one of the greatest female characters in movies, but in, in novelizations and books, too. Uh, again, this is a girl that inspired young girls to uh, inspire them to achieve and to um, be one of the guys and accomplish just as much as the guys can accomplish. Uh, Ryan, your thoughts on Hermione. So when I was making my list, I decided to contact some females for an inside track on this. Um, I have Gee. not seen... Yes. I'm sorry you don't know any females. Um, I have never seen um, these movies, but uh, my my girl Jessica in Cincinnati... What up, girl? Uh, this is number one on her list, and she was uh, really... Um, you know Had a, a really nice list that she made herself. So... Um, and all the lists that I looked up, she was way up there. And what a great performance! And uh, I love the accent, which oh yeah, Francesca has that same accent. So I saw big fan every big fan. one of these movies right. in the theater, and uh, I thought they got progressively darker as the series went on. So I'm not a, a huge fan of the later movies, but I thought the earlier ones were a lot of fun, and she was a great character. Uh, Tim, your thoughts? Uh, she did not make my list. Not not that I'm disagreeing with you. Uh, she could be a uh, honorable mention of mine but i phased out after the third one <clears throat> i saw the first three at the theater i liked them but i just felt i just really had no interest in seeing any after the third one what an idiot richie yes your thoughts on little hermione granger she is actually my number eight on this list uh it's really cool especially you get to see a young girl play such a powerful character because she was powerful she came in right off the bat boom i thought of the three main characters in the early films i thought she, she was the best oh yeah actor I, of the, I totally agree with you she yes. i mean she the character itself was just came over and it struck lightning and it kept striking lightning throughout the whole series so. yep and that's I all agree. i agree it's pardon, a good thing pardon the pun all right uh all right and let's get to my fifth Finally. character most recent character on this list what is a secretary? Ooh. Well, I do everything. I go where he tells me to go, and I do what he tells me to do. Oh, well, where I'm from, that's called slavery. I really like her. Wonder Woman, as portrayed by Gal Gadot, um, is uh, the best DC movie uh, since the uh, Christopher Nolan Batman movies. And um, such a great character. I absolutely loved what they did with this character and Gal Gadot's take on Wonder Woman. Um, and, uh, again, feisty, badass, didn't need to, uh, follow a man. She was a leader. And, um, as a matter of fact, my favorite scene from the movie, I'm going to play this real quick. Um, this could have come up on our favorite movie moments of all time. This is no man's land, Diana. Means no man can cross it, all right? This battalion has been here for nearly a year, and they, they barely gained an inch. This is not something you can cross. It's not possible. So what? So we do nothing? No, we do, we are doing something. We are. We just... We can't save everyone in this war. This is not what we came here to do. No. But it's what I'm going to do. Ryan, what are your thoughts on Wonder Woman? Um... It was good. I liked the, the character. Um, I think she did a good job as well. She did not make my list. Um, I, I, I knew she was going to make yours. Uh, when this movie came out, you were you were all all about it. And uh, so no, no shock there, but probably could have put it on my list, but I didn't. Yep. My only disappointment with the movie was the ending. I thought the battle with Ares was cartoonish and ridiculous and unnecessary. But uh, other than that, he's uh, old and he has a mustache. Uh, Tim, your thoughts? CGI, um, oh. CGI mustache. Uh, I see what you did there with the no man's land, though. Yeah, I, I that's the it. only reason I he get, picked it. I get it, it now. I get it. Uh, uh, only reason he I picked it. I put some thought into this. You guys show up willy nilly. I've been preparing for months on this. Um, sh nothing against her as an actress or her performance as Wonder Woman, but I just, I just don't do not like this movie. Um, I liked about half of it. If that, I'd give it about a 50% if I was Rotten Tomatoes myself. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so I, she, she didn't make my list uh, because of that. But, again, only because I just 
uh, it was so disappointed with the movie itself. Right. Richie, your thoughts on Diana Prince? I like her. She's a very powerful woman and uh, another good character. Good choice, Joe. Uh, I thought it was a good movie uh, pretty much all the way through. I didn't mind the Aries thing at all. And, and uh, it was actually fun again. You'll get to watch someone grow. They're out of their element, and she's learning, and then she just makes that plan of action and says, I'm doing this, and yeah, it was decisive, and that's... and she leads the guys on the charge. Yes, that was right. awesome. That was awesome. Great too. inspiration for females and little girls and boys and everybody, and I, I think mm-hmm. Hollywood needed a movie like that. All right, so that's my top five. Uh, so let's start going around the table. Ryan, um, have we touched on your number one? No. Who is number one on your list of greatest female characters? I don't know. There's so many choices. <laughs> um, I I I had this list made out, and then on my way here, I was talking to Ethan, and he threw me a curveball. Ethan is his son, for those of you who don't know. He threw me a curveball. Yes. He's like, what? I, I'm like, hey, what's your list? And, of course, he said Princess Leia. And then he's like, uh, is Miss Doubtfire. No, honorable no, mention see, right here. No, I had that as an honorable mention. That's something a guy would come up with. Who's the He's greatest 12. female He's performer 12. of all time? A guy dressed as a woman. That's Playing something a, female character. a male chauvinist pig would say. <laughs> You're calling my 12-year-old a male chauvinist pig? We're going to fight, Johnson. <laughs> Robin Williams is playing a female character. A guy playing a woman. It was a female in the movie. Time's up. Female character. <laughs> Hashtag me too. Oh, you're using it wrong. You're going to get us letters now. <laughs> 12 years old. Anyways, it's she. Miss Doubtfire was not on my list. I just thought I posed the question. I didn't realize you were going to get all... Like, I, I did actually consider it, it for uh, honorable mention. I do it's love the way your son's brain is wired. Me too. And I mean that sincerely. So do I. Um, I did. Tootsie was hotter, though. Kate, we did, we did good work, Kate. <laughs> that's, that's true. All right, so uh, number one on my... <laughs> Number one on my list, um, and it's purely uh, probably because of w- when I grew up, uh, you know, it was uh, the hottest thing ever uh, was Jessica Rabbit. And um, don't you didn't see it. Um, so uh, we can play patty cake any day. So you don't know how hard it is being a woman looking the way I do. Yeah, well, you don't know how hard it is being a man. Looking at a woman looking the way you do. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Now, I'm a Jessica Rabbit guy, too, and she actually, uh, she made my honorable mention list. What other, besides her physical attributes, do you think she belongs at the top of this list? I think because of the impact it had on society, like, people still dress up like her for Halloween. Everybody knows who she is. She's a relatable Maybe not a relatable character, but a, a you know a, a a character that's admired. Um, and she was a strong woman in in the film. You know what I love about her is that she found something to love in a cartoon rabbit, and I I love that. She Here's makes, this beautiful. He, he makes her laugh. Yeah, exactly. Does it give you hope, John? She's, <laughs> yes, it does. That's exactly right. Kind of figured he was going there. That a woman could find like, love. Can you do your impression? But she was a cartoon too. Is that it? There we go. Uh, that, I, love, on me. I love that about her, that she loved Roger Rabbit for who he was. Tim, your thoughts on Jessica Rabbit? Yeah. Um, I saw this movie once at the theater, and <clears throat> Gene Graves actually walked out of it. What? Yeah. <clears throat> I saw it with him. and Recalling him out by his full name. He, he <laughs> Gene Graves out. walked out of it. He walked out of it, and I, I was not a huge fan of this movie that either. Shocks I mean, there was some cool stuff. Like, you know, I, I thought it was cool that they had Daffy Duck and Donald Duck and, you know, that they combined the, Bugs the cartoon Mickey. universes and everything. But, uh, but, yeah, I just I'm not a huge fan of this movie. So I could not put her on my list. Richie, your thoughts on Jessica Rabbit? I would not put her on my list. Why? She it was drawn. It was just all sexual. It was it wasn't that she was that powerful of a character. Uh, Despite the fact that she was animated, know, I, I, can, I, think I think she's three dimensional. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. All right, let's move on. Ryan, I like you. I like that pick. What else you got? Thank you. Um, number two, I'm gonna go with uh, the bride. Okay. Kill Bill. 
Uh-huh. I, uh, oh. I, yeah, I okay. think uh, she did an amazing job in, in both of them, actually. Um, and she was uh, she's badass. She just, uh, you know. I agree. I, I, I mentioned on this podcast punch. before that uh, I think uh, Kill Bill Volume 1 is one of um, Quentin Tarantino's masterpieces, and I love her character. Trivia question. Can you give me her first and last name? I got it written down. So. Oh, okay. Does anyone else know her first and last name? Beatrix Kiddo. Correct. I was going to say Beatrix Kiddo. Now, it, it was <laughs> her. Uh, Bill called her Kiddo, which yeah. you thought was a nickname, and then you find out later yeah. that that's actually her last name. But uh, Could be lazy writing, yeah. too. Uh, could be. But, no, I, I agree with you. Uh, uh, watching the movie again recently, I, I thought her character was, was great. And um, she's the only actress on my list of top ten plus honorable mentions. Uh, Uma Thurman appears twice, and we may get to her other entry when we I come back around the table. probably have the same second entry exactly. on my list. Tim, your thoughts on Beatrix Kiddo from Kill I have her Kill Bill. as my number six. Oh. Um, for some reason, I have not bought these. Well, I know what the reason is. Because there has been rumors and there has been promise of the whole bloody affair being released on DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah. Uh, there's scenes with Michael Jai White that were totally cut out. Yeah, I saw that as movie. a bonus feature. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think it was released overseas. Like I, yeah. I thought it was at some point, but you, you can't get it over here. But any anyway, um, yeah, I really like these movies. I haven't watched them in a long time. I don't own them because of that because I've been waiting for that. Uh, so maybe I should just just uh, give up hope and go buy them. Well, I have my doubts that they'll ever be it. released as one movie yeah. only because the story is that all the actors and everyone who signed on board to do this film had signed on to do one movie. And then when Quentin Tarantino decided he was going to split up into two contracts had to be renegotiated for two movies. Everyone had to get paid for two movies. And so I don't know if they could uh, unmix the Kool-Aid and release it as one movie. I don't know how that would affect contracts and agreements and all that stuff. So I, I doubt we'll ever see it as one movie. So you're pretty much just going to have to watch them back to back. Richie, your thoughts on The Bride? I like The Bride uh, for a lot of reasons. I, I, when I was younger, I was big in the kung fu movies and stuff. And, of course, this movie hit all the tones of the kung fu movies. The yeah. outfit was the Bruce Lee outfit. And the was, master with the big white yeah, beard and, and mustache. And so many times, like, in the past... Uh, They've tried to do like a woman equivalent movie, and a lot of times it just falls flat. And yeah. This this one was like it raised the bar for whatever gender it is. Yeah, whatever gender is the star, and uh, that's what I liked about it. That's one of the things I liked about the movie, and, and she played this character perfect. I agree, totally believable that she was able to pull off what she pulled off. All right, Ryan, good pick. What do you thank got? You, thank you, thank you. Uh, number three is um. I don't know if it's uh, going to be on your guys' list or not, uh, but it was Vivian Ward from Pretty Woman. Interesting. <laughs> Portrayed by Rich. Julia Roberts. <laughs> I'm going to fight Rich. <laughs> First, I'm going to beat up Johnson. Sorry, I got to fight Rich. I'm agreeing with all your uh, But I'm going to fight you for calling my kid a <laughs> Jovenous Pig. I'm going to go to the bathroom during this. Good. Rest of this. Get out of here. I think leave. Returned. We don't need you. Get your stupid hat out of my way. You're blocking my camera. <laughs> so, anyways, explain yourself. Uh, pretty woman. I, I just was, you know, obviously we know the story of it and everything, and it kind of made um, uh, Julie Roberts America's uh, sweetheart. Oh, yeah. It was the way that she portrayed this woman. And again, I don't care what you think about uh, the oldest profession in uh, the world. Um, you know, she. She owned that character, and she really uh, brought through a lot and grew and developed. Rich, you love people that develop. Uh, she d- uh, definitely, you know, started off in one place and uh, uh, you know uh, took it to a, a different place. And uh, again, shows a woman in power, even if she was a lady of the night. When this movie came out in 1990, I remember uh, my aunt and my female cousins wanted to go see it, and they dragged me to the theater. Like I did not want to go see this movie. And I sat there with him, I watched it, and like the rest of America, fell madly in love with Julia Roberts. Uh, love this movie, own it on DVD. Um, but I couldn't include the character on my my list, only because, you know, how believable is it that a woman who looks like Julia Roberts gets rescued by this millionaire? And it's a great fairy tale, it's a great 
Babel. So but believable as opposed to the girl with six teeth that are. Well, I I tried I tried picking up a hook around Hollywood Boulevard and I took her to the Beverly Hills Wilshire or yeah. whatever. They threw me out. But you went to the wrong you went to the wrong spot. You need to go to the high level. You need to get the Charlie Sheen. You know, oh, I Tim, your I thoughts. Wish I, a, I wish I had on, a bad um <laughs> but um <coughs> grown. Was this was this her first big role? Big she movie, had done big Mystic, like Mystic Pizza, Pizza, I believe, before that. But okay. no, this this was her breakout role. Um for some reason, and I used to go see a lot of her movies, like Lesser movies, probably like A Kiss Before Dying, and I don't know, or not, no, not that one, Sleeping with the Enemy and Flatline. I, yeah, I used to go see like her movies at the theater, but I have never seen this movie. Wow, it's, it's entertaining, and it actually, it's one of those movies you see it, and then years later you see it again and go, oh, that guy was in it. Jason Alexander, George Costanza is yeah. in that, he? and he smacks, smacks her across the face. I'm like, George, yeah. what are you doing? He was also but, in yeah. the McDLT commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Rich, any comments on Pretty Woman? I actually walked out of this movie both times I tried to see it. Wow. I just couldn't get through it. I just, I don't know. Didn't like it. It's one of the rare movies I just don't like. It's one of those movies that, like, <laughs> feminists despise just because of the story and all that stuff. But um, People need to relax. All right. Uh, what number is that? Four? She was a great. She had all the power in the movie. <laughs> she I changed did. his entire life from That's the way true. that he did business to yeah. when she decided it was okay to kiss him on the mouth. She was in control and in power the entire way. All right. What do you got? Number five? Uh, I think he's in. I'm four, four right? Oh, yeah, yeah I'm, four. I'm on four. Okay. Uh, number four is going to be Harley Quinn. From what incarnation? Uh, Suicide the Squad? Margot Robbie version. All right. Um, again, just the, the character itself uh, and the way that it impacted society and how many girls from ages... Eight to eighty, we're dressing up like her for Halloween. Everybody wanted Comic-Con. to be like her. Comic Con, yeah, everything. Uh, she just kind of she took the uh, the um, comic book. Uh, you know, I, I, do you call her a villain or a, a heroine? I don't know, but she's a villain. Uh, it's just gray area, though. Yeah, gray area. So she took that to the next level and uh, you know made she's a name. A um, so much so that you know she's getting her own stuff. So. Yeah. I, I will agree with you and say that she, hands down, was the best thing about Suicide Squad. The only reason to see Suicide Squad. And I look forward to any spinoffs that come from this. Um, if they do a Joker Harlequin movie, I'll be there just to see Margot Robbie as Harley mm-hmm. Quinn. Uh, Tim, your thoughts on Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn? She did not make my list, but, uh, but out of the DC movies, honestly, uh, since... You know they they started redoing their whole universe. Um, I I this is one of the movies that I could actually sit through from beginning to end and really not hate a whole lot about it. I know it gets a lot of hate from people. Um, personally, I didn't think it was that bad, and and I like some of the other characters too. But uh, but yeah, she definitely was the star of the movie, and I cannot wait to see more of that. More of her character. My biggest uh, complaint about Suicide Squad was the villain. I thought the villain was contrived and just a really poor villain. Richie, your thoughts on Harley Quinn? But aren't they all villains, technically? Well, <laughs> there's been some more intriguing villains than others, and this I one was at the say bottom Batman. of the barrel. the different podcast. The no, no, I'm saying the, the Suicide the Squad. Actress. Oh, yeah, they're all villains, yeah. The, the agent. Oh, the, the boss, the yeah, boss the that boss. Like, I turned her. on everybody. She's yeah, the she, one that made me hate very her. Very unlikable character, yeah. I'm going to say, Ryan, let's go on number five. All right. <laughs> Good. Number five on your I list. Why am I friends with Rich? I don't even know why we are friends. Uh, number five on I my list. you invited him to this podcast. I, I didn't invite I'm him. I'm looking at the time, guys. Come I thought on. we told him that a different day in a different place, but he still Well, ever since up. you went live, I started to figure it out. All right, so uh, my final one, uh, I thought about mixing it up and making you guys really pissed off at me, but I'll just play it safe since uh, uh, I'm tired of dealing with you guys already today. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Mary Poppins. No, no, really. Give us a real one. No, let me hear what you got against Mary Poppins, Rich. You don't like sugar? Is that it? What, are you allergic? Are you diabetic? Come on, vegan. What's going on? Why are you, you looking forward to my disease? What are you making fun of my disease? Are you looking forward to the sequel coming out? No. Me neither. Not I, I don't think they should. I am. It looked pretty good. Redo this character. But, but I, think, no. um, I think Mary Poppins, uh, again, what an iconic 
female character. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you know, talk about empowering, and uh, you know, she was in control of everything, and uh, everybody bowed down to her. Didn't make my list, but I can I can see why someone would include her on list of greatest female characters. Definitely a iconic role yes. for Julie Andrews. Tim, your thoughts? Yeah. Um, didn't make my list either. I I had thought about it at one point, and I think I just forgot to write it down. But I don't think it would have made my top ten anyway. But but yeah, um, great character, like uh, like Ryan said, in control and uh, yeah, good. And I'm not looking forward to the remake. Or the or is it a remake or a sequel? I sequel. think it's a sequel. sequel. With uh, Emily Blunt, is yes. that who's I think so. right. Yeah, I think you're right. So. All right, so that was Ryan's uh, top five. Hey, Rich, what do you um, think about you, that pick you, over you there? Already, you already chimed in <laughs> no, on that. No, I was making fun of Ryan. Tim, uh, I'll allow what it. is number one <laughs> on your list? Is it okay? Is it? Since Ryan tried to avoid ridicule, I will take it for him. Um, <laughs> this okay? I originally I I did not see these movies like the first couple. And then for some reason I decided to see the third one and there's been six of them made. And I think this character and, I, and, and the movies themselves are kind of all over the place quality wise, but this character kicks a lot of ass through throughout the six movies that she was in. And it is Alice from the resident evil movies played by Mila Jovovich. I haven't seen any of those movies. I, I have seen people argue that she is one of the greatest movie characters or female movie characters, but I, I haven't seen one and they've never interested me. Rich, have you seen the Resident Evil movies? No. Ryan? I did not. You are, That's kind of what I figured. But. You are an <laughs> island on this one. But you know well, what? I, I'm going to allow it because I, I trust your taste. I got to say, though, I, I, I worked <laughs> at the movie theater uh, during some of those, and so I did see snippets here and there, and she was what I saw, she was amazing. Hmm. Yeah. Um, like I said, I didn't see it till the third, but uh, um, I, I've seen a few of them at the theater, and I've seen them in 3D. And there's there's other women in them too, like like the villains. And there's just some great fight scenes. And um, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's kind of hit or miss. They're kind of uneven as far as quality, but uh, but there are a couple real strong uh, installments of the movie. Um, so anyway. Okay. I guess I got to avoid ridicule anyway because <laughs> you guys hadn't seen them, but by default. But um, my number four is a movie that uh, I wish it would have done better at the theater and stayed around longer. It kind of bombed. But uh, Cherry Darling from Planet Terror. Oh, okay. The Robert Rodriguez movie where she ends up, the zombie movie where she ends up getting a uh, machine gun for a leg. And kicking a lot of ass. I will never understand why this movie tanked at the box office. I saw I it in the theater. I did too. I guess people didn't get it. I heard I a think... lot of them left after the first half because they thought it was over, not knowing there was a completely different movie <laughs> after that. Um, I think it was just ahead of its time, and people, mainstream movie goers, didn't get this movie. I I, I agree love with you. the whole I agree grindhouse with experience with the yeah. fake trailers in the yeah. middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if it would have stayed around long enough, I was really hoping that it would make it to the drive-in theaters. Yeah. But uh, but Kinda. sadly, it did not, and it was only out for like a couple of weeks. Yeah, and yeah. It, not it, long it at was all. done. But I remember, I mean, it was one of like. As an adult, one of my my favorite experiences in a, in a movie theater, like, I uh, and I remember like watching um, <clears throat> Death Proof, which I, you know, I I almost put those girls on here too, but I yeah. didn't. But uh, <clears throat> but when they first started talking about uh, the 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 car from um, Vanishing Point, right? <laughs> I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I was like. Joe has to see this. Oh, there are so I think I many car references. You, I think head. I immediately sent you a text. I'm like, go yeah. see this movie now. That moment <laughs> when um, when Zoe uh, Bell was on the hood of the car and and uh, and Kurt Russell's going after them and stuff and runs him off the road and she flies off the hood and then he he's yeah. she, he takes off after he gets shot and then they're like, let's go after him. Yeah. I thought that was one of the greatest female empower empowerment moments in movie history. I'm sitting in the theater going, what? I know. They're going after him now? Right. They're going to chase him? Yeah. That was such a great moment. Mm -hmm. And then they just kick his ass at the end. Beat, beat Which was a little cartoony, but 
Yeah. Whatever. It was great. It was yeah. awesome. Did you see the grind, Grindhouse? Yes, I did. And I, the reason I liked it was a little bit of the nostalgia feel from the 70s and a kind of little taste of Kentucky Fried movie yeah. thrown in there. But I, I really enjoyed both those movies, and uh, I did enjoy your character. It was pretty good. I love the pops and scratches and film splices and yeah. missing scenes. <laughs> and it was yeah, awesome. everything about it. Um, I wish that some of the fake trailers would have just remained fake trailers and they wouldn't right. have tried to make Even like, though Machete, machete wasn't that a fake trailer? That's what I'm talking but it, about. That, was a, I didn't that think... was a really entertaining movie. I like Machete. Yeah, but the fake trailer was a lot more entertaining <coughs> than the movie itself. Funny story about Machete. Oh, wait, yeah? Um, I got to uh, <laughs> I got to go to a Comic Con and for Comic Experience Sci Fi. Did you meet uh, someone there? I did. I I, I met Danny Trejo. Trejo. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> nice guy. Man, he fell on my foot. <laughs> nice guy. Ryan, your thoughts on uh, Grindhouse? Uh... Um, I just gotta say uh, that I have not seen Grindhouse, but our Facebook uh, community has spoken, and they said Mary Poppin, y'all. And Rich, uh, get out of the way! You're you're blocking me. <laughs> is uh, the feedback that we're getting on Facebook oh, yeah. right now? So I'm just sorry, uh, throw that out, uh, Rich. Get out of the way! You're blocking now, me on Facebook. I've watched many movies that you've insisted that I watch. Some have been good, some have been bad. You need to watch Grindhouse. Promise me you'll you watch Grindhouse. I'll I have it on Blu-ray. All right. We need to have a. We need to get together and watch some of these movies <laughs> sure. that. How that no many one's seen. others have been rad? We friends. gotta watch rad. <laughs> I'll give you guys a pass on Rad, but I love them. I kind of want to see it now. Um, we talked about it so much. Okay, uh, my number five, and you guys, this is another one that you guys probably have not seen, but um, the original Night of the Living Dead uh, did not make any money because they forgot to put, that's what, and it's in the public domain, because they forgot to put the copyright or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's how it ends up in the public domain, right? They forgot to cop- put the copyright in the end, okay. credits or whatever. So Tom Savini, who did the uh, special makeup effects genius, and the, and the yeah. makeup, yeah, decided to remake the movie in 1990. Mm-hmm. Um, but he also changed it around, where Barbara in the original movie it just sits there and is like comatose and you know pretty much useless to the whole movie. He switches it up, and Barbara is actually a big time ass kicker in the 1990 remake of Night of the Living Dead, and she's cool. the main character. Do you remember who played um, her? It is Patricia Tallman, yes. Oh, oh, okay. And uh, Tony Todd plays, I can't remember the original actor, uh, what his real name is, but mm-hmm. it's a good movie if you guys haven't seen it. All right. I mean, it's it, obviously it's a horror movie. I mean, yeah. it's, it's zombies, but... Yeah. but uh, Halloween's when, right around the corner. I, maybe when I'll I first saw it, 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 I saw it on cable one time. I know I didn't want to see it at the theater, but I saw it on cable one time, and I was like, "This movie is actually really good." Right. Cool. Either one of you guys want to chime in, <clears throat> or do you want to get no. to your list there, Rishi? Well, let me tell you, I have never seen this movie, and to update people, the Facebook story Ryan was telling was uh, fake news. <laughs> it's not fake news. Please post on. Let me. I'm, I'm. Oh, oh, now you're done. We're right. talking about Margaret Robbie. We're pressed for time, Rich. So, okay, we're uh, pressed for time. What's on your list we have not well, addressed yet? My list is really unconventional. Of uh, course. I went through <laughs> I went through Ryan, it. Ryan, you need a bathroom break? I went through it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I went through it with, uh, you know, if I loved the character, if I hated the character, the character stuck out to me, I liked it. And recently I saw a movie I probably should have saw a long time ago. And my one and two are actually from the same movie. And it's not one person. It's an ensemble. Okay. I couldn't, I can't really pick one out over the other because it, each character just brought something to it. My number one would be the maids from the movie Help. Okay. I thought they were very strong. I thought they were very uh, consistent with everything that was going on. They had a great message. The character had a great message of just giving love and all this hate surrounding them and they stayed strong with it and then my number two would be the supporting ladies in that because there's characters you hated and there's characters you could see that by the end of the movie nobody really wanted to hate is what okay. you saw at the end and and it's all, every character just grew and it's probably the performance and i'm gonna put this movie even up there with quinn luke as one of the best movies ever made oh. never saw it brian <laughs> uh <laughs> I really, really like this movie a lot, and yeah. I think they did an amazing job. I actually agree with Rich on this. Now, um, didn't the actress who 
start on that. Hasn't she been sort of bad mouthing it lately? She said she has some regrets um, working on that film. I don't know. Look it up online, no. but. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Not that it's not true, but I didn't hear that. But uh, I, I don't care what she said. I, I really enjoyed the performances. I really enjoyed the movie. And like I told you guys before, I thought it was going to be the generation's uh, color purple. Yeah. Um, I thought it was that impactful. I thought it was that, that good. Right. Tim, your thoughts on the help? No, I'm with you. I've never seen it either. All right. Wow. So that's All one right. and two. What else? All right. Got? We'll jump into number three. It comes from a classic. And it's Maggie the Cat from Cat in a Hot Tin Roof. All right. Never saw it. Ryan. Pass. Wow. <laughs> Pass. Uh, never seen it, Rich. Wow. You guys are Again. sad. That's not Elizabeth Taylor, is yes, it? Yes, it's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor, Taylor with okay. Paul Newman. All right. And wow. And she was a character you kind of like didn't like, but then you end up loving. Okay. Wow. Well, really well, wishing there was a door behind me right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what Number four you? would be G.I. Jane. G.I. Jane? Yes. Demi Moore? Yes. I did not expect that to come up today. She toughed it out, man. Yeah, I suppose. Navy SEAL type toughed okay. it out. All right. Big time. All right. I guess better than striptease. All right. What, what, what'd you think about it, Joe? Yeah, I don't know about that. No, I don't. I, I, I if I saw G.I. Jane, it was like once back on cable a long time ago. Wow. Ryan, did you see G.I. Jane? Oh, yeah. I saw, I saw it. I thought she did a good job. I wouldn't put her on my list. All right. Tim. Not on my list. Uh, you know, a lot of these other characters were actually handled with a little finesse, and I thought that was a little uh, contrived and hammer hammer me over the head with it. Wow. All right, man. This is a tough crowd, man. And number man, five. Maybe I'm just too smart for this show. <laughs> yeah. All that's, right. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. It. My last one. I think we just lost 50 followers on my our number new five. Facebook page. We probably gained 1,000. <laughs> number five. Mary Hatch from It's a Wonderful Life. Um, um, Mary? Yes. I When I watched that movie, she is the strongest character in that whole movie. Yeah. She doesn't get swayed by all the bad things that happen. Like, like George, he starts crying and stuff. She is positive. She moves forward. She finds a way to go. Her uh, honeymoon, it's not ideal, yeah. but she's a giving person, and she helped. George with the problem at the bank and she comes home and it's a honeymoon for George, not for her. She's always thinking of everybody else. And then she basically rebuilds the house herself. I didn't see oh, George no. help her rebuild the house. She did all the work around it, probably yeah. fixed sinks, you know, she does all that stuff. So she's like uh jack of all trades, raising yeah. kids, and every time there was a problem, she would get through it. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, you want the moon, Mary? Just say the word. She I'll is the throw moon. a lasso around to pull it down for you. <laughs> she Merry is. Christmas, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan. You gotta, you gotta agree with this one. I love Mary. Never seen it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yo, 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 you've never seen it. <laughs> I, I mean, I just... watch that, Harvey. Oh, that's the wrong movie. I don't. Oh man, I love Harvey. I don't care about this movie. Really? Oh, yeah, my mom watches Goodness. it every every Christmas, and I know wow. Rich loves wow. it. And like most things in Rich's life, I can't stand it. <laughs> oh my god! Wow! wow. A lot of Tim, hate uh, uh, I actually never watched this movie until I was in my thirties, and uh, I saw it pretty late in life too. This but, wasn't like a holiday oh, wow. staple in my household. Yeah, me neither. But I, I, when just, I saw I it, I, it, I loved but, it. Yeah, same with me. I, I really like it, and I, I agree with Rich there. Good, All right, good pick, Rich. All right. Um, got, got one a, of them on there. We got a little Woo. bit here. Uh, I'm going to throw out the my bottom five on my list. Uh, here's a little sound bite. My name is Trinity. Trinity. The Trinity? That cracked the IRSD base. Jesus. What? I just thought um, you were a guy. Most guys do. Yeah, like Miss Doubtfire. Um, Trinity, one of the greatest female characters in movies. I know the... The trilogy kind of uh, got worse with each installment, but such a great character. And I'm actually shocked that Carrie Ann Moss, who played Trinity, didn't go on to become a huge, huge action star. I thought she was stunning and was great in this role and was badass and held her own. And, um, man, I'd love me some Trinity. Any other, anyone else want to chime in on Trinity? Uh, I thought about putting her on my list. I agree. She's, she was good. I did not think about putting her on my list. Totally forgot about her. 
All right, and number seven on my list. Take me instead. Theo. You would take his place? Oh, no. You don't know what you're doing. If I did, would you let him go? Yes. But you must promise to stay here forever. A lot of women I know, uh, or I shouldn't say a lot, some of the women I know criticize Beauty and the Beast for its message, but I, I don't agree with them. I... I think Belle is a strong character. She's willing to take her father's place in the castle. Uh, she sees the good in Beast, brings it out of him, falls in love. Um, Belle, one of my all-time favorite female characters. The, the live-action movie was okay. I thought Emma Watson did a nice job in live-action movie, but I don't think it holds a candle, pardon the pun, um, uh, to the animated version. Anyone want to chime in on Belle? Wow! Oh, that's, that's brutal. That's coming from Ryan's shop over there. <laughs> Number eight on my list. Three tomatoes are walking down the street. Papa tomato, mama tomato, and baby tomato. Baby tomato starts lagging behind, and Pop tomato gets really angry. Goes back and squishes him. Says, catch it. Uma Thurman, Mia Wallace, Pulp Fiction. Absolutely love her character. Um, she's a little crazy, a lot of sexy. Um, imagine being asked to take out your boss's wife and she turns out to be Mia Wallace. Uh, he could get into all kinds of trouble. And then uh, and then the overdose things hap- the thing happens. And holy cow, I absolutely love this character. Any uh, any thoughts on Mia Wallace? For a foot massage. A foot, a foot massage. Um. You heard Marsalis through Tony Rocky Hard at a four story window for giving me a foot massage. Uh, that was uh, I agree with you. I, I said earlier, probably the same one. It is, although her performance in Johnny B. Good was amazing. Um, just this one just barely bumped out that performance. So. Uh, yes, absolutely. Mia Wallace is a super iconic character for many different reasons, from the dance to the scene, uh, from the $5 milkshake to the overdose. To, um, in it all, it all played perfectly. And interestingly, the poster that was in just about every theater, I know there were some variations on it, but the poster only featured Uma Thurman laying on the bed with a gun and a Pulp Fiction novel. Uh, so it's interesting that Quentin Tarantino chose her to market the film. Uh, Tim, your thoughts on Mia Wallace? Um, I love Pulp Fiction, and I love all the characters from Pulp Fiction, but no, she did not make my list, and I I, I just didn't get uh, her supposed, supposed to be attractive in that movie. Really? I, I, no. Wow. I, just, I was not attracted to that character at all. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. Now I want to dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. So dance good. Rich? I liked Mia Wallace in that movie, and uh, she's an honorable mention on my thing. And the funny little trivia quest, uh, trivia for you there is uh, during that scene when she's talking about that show she's on. Yeah, Fox actually, Sports 5. Actually describing a little bit Kill Bill. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to kind of steal a, a card from uh, Rich here. I'm going to go way back on number nine. This is a character that appeared in six movies uh, dating from 1934 to 1947. I am talking about the Thin Man movies starring William Powell and Myrna Loy. Myrna Loy plays the wealthy socialite Nora Charles, and uh, I absolutely love this character. You think that she's going to nag her husband, who's a former detective from the other side of the tracks. Instead, she wants to go along with him on his adventures, and uh, when it comes to drinking, uh, she can hold her own. I really shouldn't give him a birthday present at all, sneaking off like that, getting drunk without me. Love that character. I'm not even going to ask you guys to chime in on it, except, Rich, have you seen the Thin Man movies? I've seen, like, one. (laughs) I don't know if she was in it. You need to revisit them, and then... um, Number 10 on my list. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Uh, not surprised. Dorothy had to be included on my top 10. I have her as my number nine. Okay. Yep. Um, she made my list as well. All right. All right. I'm ready for my 
five. Um, well, hold on, Ryan. Uh, I'm gonna do. We're gonna do rapid fire now. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Uh, rapid fire. I do gotta uh, again give shout out to the people watching on Facebook Live. Some feedback coming in really quick. Uh, your movies suck, Richie. Um, <laughs> don't forget about the almost rape scene in GI Jane. So there you go on that Ooh, one. And then uh, somebody else said uh, your fedora is hard. stupid. <laughs> um, so uh, not a fan of the fedoras going on today. So uh, Man. I'm that's really, our I'm really Facebook looking for Live. this. I don't see it no, out there at they're, all. They're hitting me over here. Oh, is it direct um, messages? Yes, it? it is direct messages. Uh, Facebook Live feedback. You're liar. So, um, my top 10, uh, real quick, rattling them off here. Uh, a lot of them we had. Uh, Alex Forrest, uh, Fatal Attraction. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roller Girl. Yeah. Okay. There we oh, go. Boogie Nights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the I don't know the name of the character. You guys are gonna have to help me out. But the kid from Logan, X twenty three. Thank oh you. Oh my god, She's that was a, that was one of the. If, if we ever do a podcast on greatest child performances, that would be in my top ten. Yes, I thought that was a fantastic performance by a young actress. And that's why I made my list. Uh, Hit Girl. I thought her character was loved Hit Girl from. Uh, very, very I actually have X twenty three and Hit Girl tied for my number seven. Oh, look at that! Sorry, oh, wow. sorry, Tim. I don't okay. mean to steal all your thunder. Hey, there, don't worry about but, it. Uh, it'll, give, it'll give Richie more time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because we want that. Now, how did the, uh, did you guys see the right. sequel to that? Um, I never did see. The sequel. Like I did. I saw the sequel. I saw the sequel. Well, did it hold up to the first? Ah, uh, no, but it wasn't bad. Okay. Um, of course, uh, Misery. Uh, Annie Bates can't can uh, I mean, come on. And then I'm gonna finish. Oh wait, Saving Pri- uh, Private Benjamin. I thought Goldie Hawn with her lovable, uh, you know, uh, uh, charismatic way. Much better than GI Jane. And then um, <laughs> I'm gonna end my list with my controversial, controversial Stifler's mom. <laughs> All right, Stifler's mom. Um, All right. Okay, I guess when I made my list, I was thinking more along the lines of action stuff. Um, so really, the only ones that didn't get mentioned that I have on here. Oh, uh, Marge Gunderson from Fargo. She's on my honorable mention. Frances McDormand won an Oscar for her portrayal in Fargo. Yeah. Great, great role. Yes. Katniss Everdeen from the... Uh, the Hunger Games. Hunger Games, yeah. Now, I have nothing against her character, but I despised the first movie and never saw any... After I, I found no enjoyment in watching kids slaughter each other. But she's, but if you would have kept going, you would have yeah, saw that there was a lot I mean, more involved than just that. I just uh, uh, always do nothing for me. And then just a couple more. Billy Jean from The Legend of Billy Jean. Yes, I forgot about that. That's a great one. Yeah, from 1985. Right, I have to uh, refresh my memory on that. And if you're going to put Mrs. Doubtfire out there, then I am going to put Lassie out there. Okay. Um, we got about a minute left. Okay. Please. Rapid fire. Aaron Brockovich. Elizabeth Swan from uh, Pirates of Caribbean. Yeah. Olive from Easy A. Sophia from Color Purple. All right. My honorable mentions Never that we uh, that we didn't mention. Uh, M from the James Bond movies, played by Judy Dench. I thought she did a great job in, in that role. Uh, Ray from The Force Awakens, played by Daisy Ridley. Um, and um, Michelle Yeoh in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, good choice. Um, good choice. Have her she was list. fantastic, that. and that movie features one of the greatest fight scenes ever between two female characters. If you haven't seen it, you got to watch it just for that fight scene alone. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much my list. Oh, so, don't forget, I got to throw out there real quick uh, um, Cher from uh, Clueless. Oh, that one. I thought, I thought you were going to say share from Moonstruck. Moonstruck. <laughs> Snap hey. out of it. No. Moana is another good one. All right. This show is dedicated to all you ladies out there. And uh, I think we came up with some great names. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time on Movies for Dumb Guys and Gals. Anybody want shawarma? Let's go get yeah. some shawarma. Regina George. Dodge this.